sun dipped low on the horizon, casting long shadows over the lake's side, and a chill seemed to settle in the air. We were wrapping up our picnic, laughter echoing as we gathered our belongings. The day had been perfect until the responsibility to dispose of the trash fell on me. Near the dumpster, an innocuous jar of old mayonnaise sat, basking in the fading sunlight. But, to me, it was more than a discarded condiment. It was a jar of nightmares, a vessel holding a terror I had managed to avoid for years. I approached hesitantly, the unsettling fear rising within me. The mayonnaise had always been my kryptonite, a fear rooted in a forgotten childhood trauma. I felt the weight of that fear as I stood before the jar. It shouldn't have been more than a jar of spoiled mayo, but its very existence seemed to unravel me. As I stared at the jar, an inexplicable urge took over me. It whispered in my mind, seductive and horrifying. My hand, against my will, reached for the lid. The air grew heavy with an unspoken malevolence. I hesitated, my heart pounding in my chest, but the force was relentless. The lid twisted open with a sinister squishing pop, and the putrid smell of aged mayonnaise wafted out, assaulting my senses. Panic clawed at my throat, but I couldn't look away. The contents beckoned me, a sickening invitation. Before I could comprehend the nightmare unfolding, I found myself scooping the congealed substance into my hands. It was a macabre dance, my own hands betraying me, shoveling the cursed mayo into my mouth. The metallic taste mingled with the thick, nauseating texture. I was trapped in a grotesque pantomime, my friends' horrified gasps and shouts echoing in the background. Reality blurred, and the world seemed to shrink to that foul jar and the demonic compulsion it held. I was a puppet, and the mayonnaise demon pulled the strings. I was aware of the horror on my friends' faces, the disbelief, but I was powerless to stop. The picnic, once a day of joy, transformed into a nightmare. My mind screamed against the violation, the betrayal of my own body. The mayonnaise demon had awoken, and its appetite was insatiable. The world shifted in disorienting fragments as the last smear of mayonnaise disappeared in my mouth. The jar dropped from my hands, clattering on the ground. My friends stood frozen, expressions contorted between shock and horror. The picnic blanket now felt like a sinister shroud, and the setting sun became an accusing spotlight. My stomach churned with a vile concoction of dread and nausea. A voice, foreign and chilling, echoed in my mind, whispering promises of unrevealed horrors. As my friends rushed me to Checkered Green Hospital, the mayonnaise demon's influence seemed to seep deeper. The hospital corridors, adorned with unsettling checkered patterns, echoed with the footsteps of unseen entities. My mind swirled in the disconcerting fog where reality and nightmare intertwined. Where am I? I asked, having only heard of Checkered Green in the games I played as a child. It seemed strange to be somewhere where I only ever had imagined. The doctor at Checkered Green had an unnerving calmness about them as I delivered a revelation that shattered the fragile facade of my reality. You were born here, they declared their eyes holding an unsettling knowingness. I, I was born in Detroit, the doctor said. No. More disturbing still was the revelation that I had been admitted as a child for a mayonnaise-related incident. A twisted deja vu enveloped me, a memory I never knew I possessed. The hospital became a labyrinth of secrets, its walls whispering tales of my past. I used to play a game and imagine checkered green hospital, I told myself. I wondered where my friends had gone. I only had one visitor, only one family member left in the world. I hadn't seen her since my parents died. The sterile hospital room was bathed in the impersonal glow of fluorescent lights, casting a clinical pallor on the surroundings. 
I lay on the bed, my thoughts turbulent sea of confusion and unanswered questions. The door creaked open and Aunt Flo entered, a specter of wisdom in the muted light. Aunt Flo, I greeted, my voice carrying the weight of uncertainty. There's something about this place, about Checkered Green. The doctor mentioned something about my past, something I can't remember. She approached, her eyes betraying a well of knowledge and an awareness of the shadows that clung to the hospital's walls. Child, this hospital cradles more than just the present. It carries the echoes of a twisted past. There's a tale you must hear about your beginnings. I nodded, inviting her to share the secrets that had been kept from me for too long. Aunt Flo took a seat beside my bed, her gaze thoughtful, as if choosing the right words to unravel a dark tapestry. It's time you knew the truth, she began, her voice a soft murmur that held the weight of years of concealed secrets. When you were merely a child, Dr. Moist entered our lives, a mad scientist with darkness etched into his every intention. My eyes widened with a mix of shock and curiosity. Dr. Moist? What did he do? Aunt Flo nodded solemnly, her gaze piercing through the shadows. He took you away, kidnapped you when you were barely five. But it was no ordinary abduction. It was a nightmarish venture into the twisted experiments of a madman. E experiments? What kind of experiments? I pressed my mind racing to comprehend the sinister turn my past had taken. Dr. Moist was obsessed with the macabre, with hypnosis and controlling minds. He used you as a canvas for his wicked desires, turning you into a vessel for something far darker. She explained, her voice steady but filled with sorrow. And the mayonnaise? What does that have to do with anything? I questioned, struggling to connect the dots. Aunt Flo sighed deeply. It's more than just a condiment, dear. In his madness, the mayonnaise became a conduit for his experiments, a means to create an insatiable appetite that could never be sated. So, this uncontrollable urge I have, it's because of him? I asked, my voice unsettled. Aunt Flo nodded sadly. The mayonnaise demon, as we've come to call it, is a manifestation of Dr. Moist's twisted legacy. He bound you to that insatiable hunger, a curse that Checkered Green seems to thrive upon. I clenched my fists, a determination growing within me. I need to confront him. I need answers. Aunt Flo placed a gentle hand on my shoulder, her touch both comforting and cautionary. Confronting Dr. Moist may lead to wounds that never heal, dear. But, if you seek answers, tread carefully in the shadows he cast, the echoes of his madness linger within checkered green's walls. Each word she uttered dug into my psyche, leaving me with a chilling understanding of the forces that had shaped my existence. Dr. Moist's maniacal laughter seemed to echo in the background as Aunt Flo revealed the extent of my tortured past. The hospital walls pulsed with secrets as I delved deeper into the adjourning mental health wing to confront Dr. Moist. The air grew thick with dread. My steps were haunted by the ominous creaking of the checkered floor beneath. The air in the mental health wing was thick with the sterile scent of antiseptic, and a sense of foreboding hung in the corridors. As I navigated the labyrinthine halls of checkered green, my footsteps echoed against the cold linoleum. The staff with guarded expressions, guided me toward a particular padded room where the specter of my torment awaited. The door creaked open, revealing Dr. Moist, once a man of scientific authority, now reduced to a disheveled figure confined within the padded room. His eyes, devoid of the sharp clarity they once held, flickered with distant madness. I stood, momentarily frozen, as I beheld the fallen puppeteer of my nightmares. Dr. Moist, now a mental health patient within the confines of Checkered Green, was a mere shell of the man who had orchestrated twisted experiments. His laughter, a distorted melody that reverberated within the confined space, sent shivers down my spine. 
He turned vacant eyes towards me, a semblance of recognition flickering across his face. Ah, the prodigal child returns. You were my masterpiece, the canvas upon which I painted the symphony of desire. I hesitated, fear clawing at the edges of my resolve as Dr. Moist's eyes fixated on me with an unsettling intensity. What did you do to me as a child? What twisted experiments did you subject me to? Mayonnaise demon, he mumbled, his voice a distorted whisper that seemed to linger in the sterile air. The hunger. The craving. It transcends the boundaries of the mind. Experiments, he murmured, his words unraveling like frayed threads of a once coherent narrative. Unlocking the mysteries, the mayonnaise. His cryptic utterances sent a shiver down my spine. The room with its padded walls seemed to close in as I confronted the wretched embodiment of my childhood nightmares. Why the mayonnaise? Why subject me to an insatiable appetite? I pressed, my voice trembling with a mix of fear and anger. Dr. Moist's response was an unsettling laugh, a fractured sound that reverberated within the padded confines. <laughs> Conduit. Appetite. Transcendence. The mayonnaise demon is the key to enlightenment. As I grappled with the disturbing revelations, I steeled myself for more answers. Enlightenment? You stole my sanity, my life! Why? His eyes gleamed with a fleeting hint of lucidity, and he leaned in, as if sharing a secret. Sanity, my dear, is an illusion. The mayonnaise demon reveals the true nature of desire, the primordial hunger that lurks within us all. The chilling calm in his voice clashed with the madness that danced in his eyes. You're a monster, I whispered, the weight of my past settling over me like a suffocating shroud. Dr. Moist chuckled, a sound that sent shivers down my spine. Monster? <laughs> no, my dear. I am the harbinger of truth, the revealer of the forbidden desires that society seeks to suppress. Images began to flood my mind, distorted memories clawing their way to the surface. Dr. Moist's voice became a nightmarish soundtrack as he recounted the horrors of my past. I harness the power of mayonnaise, a gateway to the depths of desire, he explained, his words weaving a tapestry of terror. You were my unwitting subject a vessel for transcendence of the human psyche. The mayonnaise demon became the key to unlocking the primal cravings that lie dormant within. As he spoke, my surroundings blurred and I found myself reliving the nightmares of my childhood. The sterile room transformed into a twisted laboratory, the acrid scent of mayonnaise filling the air. I was a child again, helpless and at the mercy of Dr. Moist's macabre experiments. His maniacal laughter echoed, a dissonant accompaniment to the distorted memories playing out before me. I saw myself, a child unable to resist the insatiable urge, devouring spoonfuls of mayonnaise while Dr. Moist observed with a perverse satisfaction. The horror of the revelation gripped me and I clutched my head, just trying to dispel the nightmarish visions. Dr. Moist's voice continued recounting the details of the experiments that had scarred my past. The mayonnaise demon was not just a hunger for condiments. It was a gateway to enlightenment, a revelation of the darkness within. He proclaimed, his eyes gleaming with twisted conviction. I stumbled backward, the walls of the padded room closing in on me. The visions, a grotesque dance of memories and madness, continued to travel. Dr. Moist's laughter melted with my terrified cries, creating a cacophony of despair. 
As he reveled in his delusional proclamations, I felt a suffocating grip on my sanity. The padded room, once a place of confinement for Dr. Moist, had become a theater of my deepest fears, a stage where the horrors of my past played out in vivid, terrifying detail. I staggered out of the padded cell, the laughter pursuing me. In the cold embrace of checkered green, I was left to grapple with the terrifying truth. The mayonnaise demon, born from the depths of a mad scientist's malevolence, was now an inseparable part of my existence. The hospital's grasp tightened, and I faced the harrowing prospect of a life lived in perpetual fear, haunted by the demonic compulsion that had consumed me by the lakeside. The days at Checkered Green blurred into an indistinct nightmare, the hospital's checkered walls closing in on me like a sinister cage. The mayonnaise demon's whispers grew louder, a relentless chant echoing through the recesses of my mind. Night after night, I was tormented by nightmares, visions of mayonnaise oozing from every crevice, a pungent smell choking the air. I awoke in cold sweats, the remnants of a demonic feast lingering in my senses. The hospital staff, their faces painted with forced smiles, seemed oblivious to the malevolence that clung to me. In the cold light of day, I gazed upon my reflection in the hospital window, my eyes haunted by the mayonnaise demon's malevolent spark. Acceptance settled within me, a grim acknowledgement that the demon was part of who I was now, an indelible mark etched into the fabric of my existence. The hospital's courtyard, bathed in the pallid glow of flickering lamps, became my sanctuary, a place where the unsettling pack of the mayonnaise demon unfolded in silent surrender. Mayonnaise jar, once a harbinger of horror, now sat before me. As an offering. With a reluctant hand, I scooped a finger into the congealed substance and brought it to my lips. A strange calm settled over me as I consumed the cursed mayo. The demon, momentarily appeased, retreated to the recesses of my mind. The jar's contents, though repugnant, were a communion with the demon that dwelled within. Once emptied, I felt momentarily free of it never knowing when I would feed it again. <laughs>